Hello and welcome once again to the Great Pernix Thief. Today we have a particularly ghoulish episode, Shades of Morton. Now, if you haven't been to Morton before, or haven't done the quest yet, which is highly likely, then I'm going to give you some quick directions. Once you get over the River Salve and have completed Priest in Peril, or, and at least started Nature Spirit, or you can walk around to negate the Nature Spirit requirement, you need to navigate your way. The fastest way is to take the river the shoreline here along the river until you get back here then you're gonna need to navigate your way through the snail air this kind of snail habitat I'd like to call it and then you arrive in Morton for those of you who have done in aid of the Meyer choir you may have already been to Bergirat or if you've done Haunted Mine you'll know where it is or for players who are pretty far in their questing experience which then I'm questioning why you're watching my guide you may use Draken's Medallion for quick teleports. This requires the branches of Darkmire at least partly complete to access, and will not drain charge for teleporting in Mortania. So if you want to home teleport to Campus and teleport, that would probably be the most efficient. Now, to get started, we're going to need a few things. First, we're going to need to feed my chick, because it's probably in the red again. Second, we're going to need to go to the Builder Store. During the quest, you make Serum 207 to temporarily cure inhabitants of the disease. However, if you make Serum 208, it will permanently cure the general store owner and the priest. Now, you're going to need a few things for this. You're going to need limestone bricks. I didn't want that many, but I guess that illustrates the point. Second, you're going to need lots of of sacred oil. This is what we need to make pyre logs for. So we'll buy just one of each. Make it easier on ourselves. And then I have plenty of swamp paste left over. Moving on, you're going to need to head for the temple here. At, once you're at the temple, you have two options. You can either start fighting or start repairing. And those are just how they sound. Repairing gives some crafting experience and fire making every time you light the altar. That can be gained either way. And fighting, well, grants fight combat experience in whatever you're using. You also get shade remains to burn later. We're not focusing on that right now, though. You'll notice up in the top corner here, put my XP counter away so it's easier, you can see the state of the temple itself. You can also see how much resource you have left. That's only matters for repairing, and the most important thing, sanctity. This dictates how much oil you can sanctify into sacred oil, or turn Serum 208. Each shade kill gives a little bit of sanctity, only one at the altar. Beware though, if you have food, there are gas lurking in the background, and they can rot your food. Also, a further disclaimer, you can die doing this, and if you do die, you will have to run all the way back here to get your stuff. So, just a fair warning. Now, once you have about 20 to 30 percent, you can start sanctifying. It takes 10 percent minimum, but you won't get much done. You'll get like two things. It takes two doses of sacred oil for the lowest level logs, and it takes four for the highest level, starting from you. Now, you need a minimum of 65 fire making to actually burn all the shades. Oh, fire's out. This is something you'll get to do every now and again. The fire will go out. You can light it for 100 experience. Now, let's make all these, well, as many as I can, pyre. Perfect. Now, I've got plenty of logs. You may be wondering, well, if you're only doing a tutorial, you should only need one log per thing. Um, I tried that in the past. Not every time you get keys. Sometimes you'll get coins for whatever reason. It's the same with Vire Watch. So, just be warned, you might not get a key to the temple. I've already brought a key with me, just because I have one at all times, since I don't like to burn the lower level shades normally. You'll notice you'll get it. plenty of experience for this, and it only goes up as you level. This is the base experience. By the way, that bonus experience is in prayer. It's 75 for each, for the base level. 
like rare experience, I suppose. Now, once I've got all these burned, we're going to head to the tomb, and I would normally just cut there through the magic of editing, but for the sake of showing people where it is, I'm going to walk there, since the number one question is, where's the shade tomb? Oh, that, or where can I buy sacred oil? That's another good one. Open the wooden doors. You will need a key to access them. You cannot enter without a key. Once inside, you'll notice particularly that it's very dark. Also, there's different types of shades in here. Most of the time, they're aggressive. For some reason, they're not right now. To me, might be my combat level's too high. I wasn't aware they became unaggressive. But, we're gonna roll with it. So since I have a silver key, I can go all the way to the silver. I'm gonna kill one of each shade, so I can burn one of each shade. Or at least two, actually, that's a better idea. I have plenty of pyre logs and sacred oil in my bank to sanctify a good amount of logs. Now, as you'll notice, there's plenty of these rooms that seem to be locked off. Those rooms contain your reward. If you're very lucky, you'll get a gold key, which you might be able to use to get a necromancer set, which is a basically upgraded Dagon High robes. And they look pretty cool. That being said, it's pretty rare. Uh, you'll be here a while before you get one of those. But if you do get one on your first try of burning a uh, fire shade, then... Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm just going to say it outright. I'm jealous if you manage to pull that off. Now, most commonly, you're going to get stuff like Runite, I'm sorry, not Runite, Mithril, and things here, which is great. You can bring some alchemy stuff, get some magic experience at the same time. But if you're looking for pure profit, it's mostly in fine cloth, which is used in the infamous split bark armor. Oh, and if you pay attention, you can see the barrows right next door. Just take my pickaxe, Minecraft my way in there, and we'll be good to go. Now, I'm not going to grab a second remain of the highest level shade purely just to save on pyre logs. And because I don't feel like going back to the temple. Now, we're going to burn the rest of these. And then we'll get back once we have the keys. And through the magic of editing, we're back. Now, I did want to skip over this part. But I decided that it actually would be more informative just to show you the experience rates for these higher level shades. So we're going to start with the highest level shade first. Oh, what's this? It appears I can't burn these with you. Oh, wow. That's a... Well, allow me to correct myself. I cannot burn these with you. I'll have to go get magic. Now see, that's what can happen. You can get those. I'll go get some magic blocks in a minute and then be back with more video editing. Now, with any luck, I'll get a silver or a black key. Ah, there we go, silver. Now to burn the friend remains. Friend can be burned with basic higher logs. Just as a forward mention. Now, these will grant different types of keys. Hang on. There we go. Steel key red. Don't really need you anymore now, do I? Okay, so when we get back, I'll have some magic pyre logs, and I will show you the max level shades being burned. And we're back. Now that I have the proper type of log, we can burn these. Now you're going to notice when you burn these, if you do get a key, it's either going to be a golden key, if I'm really lucky I'll get one, or a silver key. This is because they are the highest type of shade available and there's nothing higher. Now I'm probably not going to get a golden key. I've only gotten like two the entire time I've been doing this in my little rehearsals. I also get coins. So yeah, they give a fair amount of coins per burn. So we're gonna head in now and cash in our keys, so to speak. And honestly, I wish there was an easier way to do this, but there's not. Now, upon entering the dungeon, you get to pick any door. It really does not matter. The loot is all randomized. 
you can either, if it's too hard to see, like that, you can just turn it, examine the lock. Your Ring of Wealth does affect your drops in here. Many of these do need to be updated, I will say. I mean, it's been a good long while since Shades of Morton had any sort of update done to it. So if a Jagex moderator is watching this video, or a P mod, then you know what to do. There we go. Oh, I suppose they did update it slightly. There's offhand stuff down here now, but it's not quite the update needed, like, you know, a fresh paint, coat of paint on the dungeon, maybe. Some shades reworked, since this is still a fairly popular minigame. Mostly because there's a quest tied to it, but that's besides the point. Now, as you're noticing, I'm having to do a lot of running around. Normally, you want to just stick to one type of key, like either black or silver, preferably silver, if you can afford the uh, pyre logs to get to them. If not, then just the best he can do, since honestly, the only reasons to come in here are for special shade drops, mostly uh, the fine cloth and necromancer kit. Fine cloth is used in split bark and the necromancer kit. Necromancer kit is the upgrade, as mentioned previously. And other than that, there's really not a lot of reason to come down here. You can get some mid-level... If you have a clan mate that wants some weapons you either can't buy off the GE or just don't want to make, this is a pretty easy way to get some low-level stuff. Uh, I just got to flatten her hammer. A little bit of rune. And then I'm not going to cash in my last key, because my last key is my reserve in case I need to come down here for something, which I don't often, but it's good to have a spare key of the highest level so you can open any type of door down here. That's just my personal standpoint. Other people, they'll cash in all their keys at once. It's totally up to you. Sorry, I was seeing cross there. And we head back out. Now, what with your newfound loot, you have a few options. You can either take it to the Grand Exchange, you can sell it at the general store here, you can bank it in Bergdorod if you have it unlocked and do it there. It's all up to you. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and possibly leave a subscription. This is the Great Pernix Thief, signing off.